Enticing for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, Jesus Christ above all things. On this earth, He came down to save us. Always in our lives, in our every step. Until death do us apart, if we choose Satan or Jesus Christ as our Savior, they will reward us so, choosing hell or heaven to go to. God, we love you always in our lives. God. And we said, for you alone are the Holy One. And we sing, for you alone are Jesus Christ. In our lives and in every human being, they have the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ and God the Father within, and their guardian angels. They have the knowledge of goodness and demons within to the devil within. But for we are not alone in this fight. We got to choose our law, our law and our God above all the laws that Satan and the devil and our government tries to slay us with. Because all the laws of the government need to be for God the Father, obeying all his laws, King Solomon needs to do that we have been reading, past and present, we've been reading first book of Kings, and we're on chapter 11 now, Solomon's shame. And for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are Lord Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen. And we sing, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. Jesus Christ in your holy Bible and the words, truth, testament of time. God, you're with us today and all days until death separates us. From this earth and our soul either descends to hell or ascends to heaven with you, God. Jesus Christ, you are the God above all things in this land on earth. You vanquish all evil for us so that we may choose to love you above all things as our sacrificial lamb to save Adam and Eve's fall of sin from the beginning that Satan and the devil caused us to sin and slay us with. God, you are our love. You're the best thing that we have in this life. Jesus Christ, we love you so very much and your words and testament of time in your holy bible here we love reading your holy bible god all the days of our lives we can for you jesus christ you are our love and our life our love and our life Today and every day we dedicate to you. God, we need to dedicate as many days as possible and all our days possible to you.
ハーメンハーメン For you alone are the Holy One You alone are the Lord You alone are Lord Jesus Christ You are above all things. God, we love you every day of our lives. Oh, yes, God, we love you. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. Jesus Christ, you are the one and only God above all things. You are our strength. You're our truth, testament of time and sacrifice. With your love, which is the greatest sacrifice above all things, you gave us today and all days in our lives on this Earth until we reach your holy paradise in heaven, God, we strive to see you and not Satan's devil, evil face. God, we need to slay him and choose you to go to heaven instead of hell with the devil. We need to go to heaven and see you, Jesus Christ, face to face all the days of our life and sing praise and glory and honor in your truth and life and life you gave us and obeying and sacrificing and loving you all the days of our lives. God, we love you so very much. God, we love you so God, we love you so very much today and all the days. Mm. Ooh, I love that song. I love that song, you guys. Chapter 11, first book of Kings, Solomon's Shame. We're reading today. We previously read Solomon in all his glory, and now... We're going to be reading about love, hardship, Solomon's death to your tents. Always, oh, it's gonna be a um, the wisest man that God blessed and, and gave us. You know, we're gonna be reading about today, King Solomon, the wisest man on this earth, the wisest king. Um, may God rest his soul and help him to get out of hell if he's in hell or to transcend him to heaven god stri or if he's in purgatory strive to have him go to heaven god your father wherever his soul may be god king solomon yes we read we read previously that he, he had many wives and uh you know concubines and and mystery and uh, you know they, these kings they suffer you know from choosing one woman to be with all the days of their life. Uh, God, did, how you destined and wanted us to be perfectly one man for one wooden, woman, one Adam for one Eve, eternally in marriage forever. And these women that he keeps marrying from different lands, and they keep trying to tempt his soul to move him from you know, different gods, and you know, we're going to be reading on after we get past the first book of Kings, the hardship of King Solomon too. And, uh, you know, this, I, I love, I love, I love this, you guys. And I love, I love this, this song is just, it, it's of beauty for God because yes, we are broken children. Yes, we have fallen to this earth from the fall. Yes, we can go to hell if we keep keep continuing falling and being in our fallen state, or we can rise up from sin and to choose God the Father and to become holy children of God instead of fallen children with the devil. Falling children, falling to sin, keeping falling our lives down as 
unholy children and the unholy children we will be if we go to hell. But holy children we will be if we go to heaven and choose to love and obey God. That's why the song of love and sacrifice, the For You Alone song, it, it brings me back um, of going to the Catholic Church and my dad and always driving us and leading the way as a strong fatherly figure and example in our lives is the man leads the woman in battle to God, to the house of God in marriage. That is the best for a dad and a father to be. Like our loving father, God the Father, did to Jesus Christ, sending down his one and only son to proclaim the good news and to spread the truth and life. Because for he alone is the only one, is our only savior, Jesus Christ, who is the I am before Abraham was born, he is. He is God, and he is the greatest in, in this world and in everything in life. He is our savior and our number one. Love we need to have in our lives. Because for he alone, for you alone, Jesus Christ, we loved you so much. Because for you alone are the Lord and Holy One of our lives. And this earth you will save us, God, if we so choose you. Mm, I love it. Chapter 11, let's start. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for our life. Thank you for everyone's life out there. Help us to vanquish our knowledge of evilness and to choose the knowledge of goodness all the days of our life. Instead of the knowledge of evilness, to listen to Satan. No, no, no. No more the demons inside, the demons within. I want children. God, we're going to be living. We're going to be loving and living and living in our guardian angels, Holy Spirit within, and your Holy Spirit within Jesus Christ, God the Father and the Holy Spirit, within our bodies to choosing you, God the Father, your holy guardian angel within us, the good and holy spirit within, to vanquish our demons within and to choose God the Father and his holiness within our bodies, everyone's body out there, instead of our demons within, our devils within, causing us to sin and slaying them within. Through God the Father and Jesus Christ, the Son and the Holy Spirit within, the three in one God, that you are our Christian God, our Christian love of our lives. In your name we pray, amen. The one and only Christian God, the zealous and jealous God above all things, that is what we are reading in this Holy Bible and learning from the wisdom of how we were created. So day by day, life by life, this is Bible two and two years journey we are still on. Today, we are reading chapter 11 on first book of Kings, verse 1. Let's begin. But, oh yeah, and then we'll close the prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Or we'll open with the prayer. Please help and heal us, God, with your Bible and life. In your name we pray, amen. Let's get, let's get some wisdom here. Learn some wisdom from King Solomon and God the Father. What does he have for us to learn and to obey and to uncover and unveil in our lives today? The shame of King Solomon. Chapter 11. But King Solomon loved many foreign women. Ah, oh, the women. Ah, it's always the women. The lust. But we enslave this lust and to choose one woman above all women. You see, how did I know this was going to be foreshadowed until I didn't even peek or I promise you guys, I just looked at the stuff things I didn't even read through, but I, I just had a feeling that we were going to talk about this. So that's why I was talking about it beforehand, even though I didn't, you know, see the word or anything before this. I was just had it on and I, we kept singing and we just went into it. Miracles like this happen. God, he gives us things to talk about. And, and when we talk about his holy words and his holy Bible, and when we stumble upon reading it, <laughs> just today out of all these past 
you know, two, three years, we've been going hard nonstop daily in the Bible, day by day, life by life reading. And now that we are filled with holiness and goodness, God transforms our words to see the miracles in his Holy Spirit within that we, he is using our bodies as beacons, as truth, as, as, uh, as our holy temple that we talked about yesterday to spread the good news and to become the children of Israel again. The holy children of Israel. And we have to do that by, sometimes in life we have to see it takes hell to appreciate heaven. It takes going through hell to appreciate heaven. Going and walking through hell, whether, you know, like King Solomon, loving all these women, these four women, you know, committing lust, adultery with them, you know. But he needed to confess his sin and to obey God the Father instead of these women. Loving God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three in one God, above any man, woman, wife, child on this earth, husband in this, in this earth. Any person, human being, and since he chose to love these women more and to spend more time with them than God the Father, than the Holy Church, and going to and, and sacrificing and with the Ark of the Covenant, God's going to punish him with his death today. Look, Solomon's shame. You know, it's, it's going to happen, you guys. It's going to happen. Chapter 11, verse 1. But King Solomon loved many foreign women, as well as the daughter of Pharaoh, Women of the Ammonites, Moabites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the children of Israel, you shall not mix with them, neither shall they mix with you, lest they turn away your heart after their gods. Lowercase g-o-d-s, gods. Solomon clung to these in love. And he had 700 wives. <laughs> 700 wives. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and after Malcolm, the god of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then Solomon built him a high place for Chemosh, the god of Moab, on the mountain that is before Jerusalem. And for Malcolm, the god of the Ammonites. And likewise did he for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other lowercase g-o-d-s gods. But he, com but he kept not that which the Lord commanded him. Therefore, the Lord said to Solomon, for as much as you have done this, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes and my commandments, which I have commanded you, I will surely rend the kingdom from you and will give it to your servant. The kingdom of God. In heaven, God the Father is talking about. Not letting King Solomon's soul get to heaven, but being in hell, keeping it from him, but letting his servants go to heaven above him, who God the Father is saying he's going to go to hell. Mm. He's going to hell for not listening to God. All these 700 wives, and he just kept not listening to God, even though he had the, all the greatest wisdom in the world. You see, that's the power sometimes of having all the greatest wisdom in the world and all the gold and all everything. Then he just gets so rich and corrupt. And it's hard, the, all the rich men in the world, it's harder for them to enter into the kingdom of heaven 
as hard as it is for a camel to enter into the eye of the needle. It's so hard for them. It's so hard. The servants, the humble, the meek, the poor, they shall enter, inherit the kingdom of God before the rich. Rich in money, which their money became their love of life, and their many wives became the love of their life, became their lust and their greed, their mammon, their God, their golden cap, their gold. We read yesterday about the forests of Lebanon were all gold. He made all the gold shields. He made gold so valuable that silver and bronze were just nothing. They were just pitiful in, the, in, his, in King Solomon's eyes. But God the Father said, you see, you shouldn't disobey me and you shouldn't worship all these gold and these women and these golden calves and these, their fake lowercase g-o-d gods that you have made a, as your God and your love instead of God the Father, him, Jesus Christ, above all things. So God is punishing him by sending his soul down to Sheol, to hell, to Hades with, with Satan. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. Hmm. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other lowercase G-O-D-S, gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, capital G-O-D, the Lord his capital G-O-D, God, as was the heart of David, his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and after Malcolm, the god of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David, his father. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemesh, the god of Moab, on the mountain that is before Jerusalem. And for Malcolm, the god, the lowercase G-O-D, god of the Ammonites, and likewise did he for all his foreign wives. All his foreign wives that were devil worshiping and worshiping all these golden cat, these, you know, these, you know, God of the Zeus God, this, they were saying Malcolm, the lowercase G O D, Chamash, the lowercase G O D, and his heart was following all these fake, you know, Greek or whatever, you know, that these women. His wives were tempting him to worship these fake other god, lowercase g-o-d gods, instead of the true God, Jesus Christ, above all these lowercase g-o-t-s s's. That they he spit he he slays them as they are nothing, because God the Father, Jesus Christ, is the one and only Christian God, in spirit and in essence and in truth and light. That he came down on this earth as God to prove that anything is possible for God and even God can become man, a human being. God can be on this earth. And he was, and then he got slain, and then he took the keys of, of Satan and hell back from Satan and restored them. For three days he descended to hell. He went through hell and back to get us back to heaven. Towards the path to heaven. To get us back to choose for us a path towards heaven instead of hell. And so that way we can choose heaven instead of hell. We have a choice now instead of just everyone, you know, suffering and going to hell. Except for this, you know, small few like Elijah that he got sent in a blaze of fire to heaven. some of these strong but most people in the old testament you guys they went to hell they kept disobeying god i mean elijah was one of the few who went to heaven but you know reading here even king solomon look at what god is saying he's going to hell look he's commanding him to go down and to perish his soul to hell and likewise did he for his fort okay then so uh, then solomon built a high altar for chamosh the god of moab 
on the mountain that is before Jerusalem, and for Malcolm, the lowercase G-O-D, God of the Ammonites. And likewise did he for all his foreign wives who burned incense and sacrificed to their lowercase G-O-D, as gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God, capital G-O-D, God of Israel, who had, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other lowercase G-O-D-S, gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded him. Therefore, the Lord said to Solomon, for as much as you have done this, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes and my commandments, which I have commanded you, I will surely rend the kingdom from you and will give it to your servant. Nevertheless, in your days, I will not do it for David, my servant's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to your son for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem, Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen. And the Lord stirred up an adversary against Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. He was of the royal family in Edom. For when David destroyed Edom, and Joab, the commander of the army, went up to bury the slain, he slew every male in Edom. For Joab and all Israel with him remained there six months until he had slain every male in Edom. But Hadad fled, he and certain Edomites from among his father's servants into Egypt, Hadad being yet a little boy. They set out from Midian and came to Paran. And they took men with them out of Paran and went into Egypt to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who gave him a house and food and said to him, dwell with me and give and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh so that he gave him to wife, the sister of his own wife, the sister of Tahpenes, the queen and the sister of Tahpenes bore him Genubath, his son, whom Tephpenes weaned in Pharaoh's house, and Genubath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. And when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab, the commander of the army, was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, let me depart that I may go to my own country. But Pharaoh said to him, what have you lacked with me that, behold, you seek to go to your own country. And he answered nothing, but do let me go. God also stirred up against Solomon, another adversary, Hidron, the son of Eliada, who had fled from his lord Hadarazer, king of Zobah. And he gathered men to him and became captain over a band. When David slew the people of Zobah, and they went to Damascus and dwelt in it, and Hadad reigned at Damascus, and he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon. Damascus here, where I'm from. He's going to slay King Solomon with some Syrians. And he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon because of the evil which he did. And Hadad oppressed the children of Israel because they, remember, they sinned the tribes of Israel, and, and under King Solomon, they sinned, except out of the tribe of David, King Solomon, you know, that God saved, this Syrian, Assyrian man that we're talking about here, that God is choosing to punish the children of Israel, for they have sinned and slay King Solomon too. But he's going to restore the children of Israel through this tribe through, and he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon because of the evil which he did. And Hadad oppressed the children of Israel and reigned over Aram, present day Syria. He reigned over Syria. It says in quotation marks in Syria there. And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, let's read that again. Chapter 20, or verse 24, chapter 11, we are on still. And he gathered men to him and became captain over a bond. When David slew the people of Zobah, and they went to Damascus and dwelt in it, 
And Hadad reigned in Damascus. Damascus, Syria. And he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon because of the evil which he did. And Hadad oppressed the children of Israel and reigned over Aram, Syria. And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephraimite, an Ephrite of Zidah, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name, oops, we got too strong. We're going to have to take this one up. So the next person doesn't. Got too passionate about reading God's Holy Bible. It happens when we were turning the page, it accidentally, um, we're going to have to take that one up. All right. We're reading about his mother, servant whose mother's name, or no, not his mother, his servant's mother, Solomon's servant, whose mother's, oh, his servant, yeah, his servant's mother, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zoria. A widow, even he lifted up his hand against King Solomon. And this was the reason why he lifted up his hand against King Solomon. When Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David, the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing that the young man was valiant, made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass at the time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, encountered him on the road, and Ahijah had clad himself with a new garment, and the two of them were alone in a field. And Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and tore it into twelve pieces. Twelve pieces, like the twelve tribes of Israel. These coincidences, they don't just happen for no reason, you guys. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will, render, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon. The kingdom of God out of the hand of Solomon. And he's going to give Solomon the kingdom that he desired in hell with Satan for disobeying him. He's going to take his soul to hell, you guys. Because of all the sins he did. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten pieces, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to you. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because he has forsaken me and has worshipped Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and Shamash, the lowercase judy, god of the Moabites, and Malcolm, the lowercase judy, god of the Ammonites, and has not walked in my ways and has not done that which is right in my eyes and has not kept my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Nevertheless, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him a ruler all the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and will give it to you, ten tribes. And to this and to his son, I will give one tribe that David, my servant, may have an heir always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen for myself to put my name there. And I will give it to you, and you shall reign according to all that your soul desires, and you shall be king over Israel. And if you shall hearken to all that I command you, and will walk in my ways and do what is right in my sight and keep my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did, I will be with you and build you a sure house. As I, as I, built, as I have built for David my servant and will give Israel to you, and for this I will afflict the descendants of David, but not forever. Solomon sought, therefore, to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam arose and fled to Egypt, to Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. 
and the rest of the Acts of Solomon, and all he did, and his wisdom, behold, they are written in the book of the Acts of Solomon. And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David, his father, and Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his stead. Chapter 12. I'm going to read that one tomorrow. We'll close with the prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. God, you are our light, our salvation. Save us, God. Help us to not make King Solomon's mistake and take us to hell. But to take us to heaven with you, God, even King Solomon, we pray that hopefully you choose to harden his punishment less, not have him suffer in hell, God, but to transcend his soul to heaven through our prayers in this world and us humans that we have the power to pray for the dead and to um, help alleviate their pains and sufferings and, and, give, and, and to do penances and indulgences for them so that they can ascend to heaven. In your name we pray for the dead, King Solomon. Amen. So, chapter 11 is a powerful chapter. Powerful, powerful, powerful. 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 Hmm. I want to read this chapter 11, verse 11. 11, 11. It's a very powerful, 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 powerful verse here. Actually, let's read chapter 10. I mean, chapter 11, and then let's read verse 10. Let's reread verse 10, reread verse 11, and then reread verse 12. Verse 10, my birthday is on the 10th, January 10th, 1, 1. 1 plus 10 is what? Is It's 11. Actually, let's just read chapter 10 and then chapter 11. Or no, chapter 11 and then chapter 11, verse 10 and then verse 11. So this is verse 10 on chapter 11. And had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded him. So he's saying to King Solomon, he warned him not to go after gods, not to go after these women, his wives, you know, and, and, and goddesses, and in lowercase g, god, lowercase g, goddesses, in lowercase g, gods, these fake gods, and these that these women have caused him to sin. His queens, his his wives, and but the king, King Solomon, is the one that needs to suffer for his sin the most. And he will, and God is showing him he is going to be suffering for a sin. That was verse 10. This is verse 11. Chapter 11, verse 11. This is 11, 11. Chapter 11, first book of Kings. One, 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 one. There's five ones there. First book of Kings, one Kings, one, 11, chapter 11, one, one. And then another 11, one, one. Verse 11 that we're going to be reading. Chapter 11, verse 11, or 2 1. 11, 11. That's four. Four ones right there, or five ones if you include first book of Kings after the second book of Kings. We'll read. Or no. Yeah, we will, we might go, we'll go back to first book of Kings next two years and two years. We'll, we'll go back and, re- and keep reading it in the Orthodox Bible in a year. Bible in three, I'm going to do that one, Bible three in three years, the Orthodox Bible style. All right. Chapter 11, verse 11, this is it. This is the chapter, and then we're going to close in the prayer and, and, and be um, finished for today. This is it. Therefore, the Lord said to Solomon, For as much as you have done this, you have not kept my commandment and my statutes and my commandments, which I have commanded you. Therefore, I will surely rend that means take away the kingdom of heaven from you and will give it to your servant. Yeah. 
He's going to take away the kingdom of heaven. He's going to give him the kingdom of hell and the gold and the riches and the fake GODS gods. And he's going to have him burn there for it. But through our prayers, we can hopefully help to heal God's anger and mercy towards King Solomon. And we can hopefully save him from hell to get him to heaven, you guys. That's, that's what it's all about today. You know... We all have shame, like this is chapter, chapter 11 is called Solomon's shame. He is being shamed, shamed and he, he is shame of all his sin, all his 700 wives and, and princesses. He's, he's shamed of them and his 300 concubines. That's a thousand women, or no, 700 plus 300, yeah. That's a thousand women. A thousand women. Imagine how many men have like built... How big his house, what his his mansion was, his kingdom was, his all of the different out that that all these women were, or all the if it was just one, or like from all the lands, then they had their own king and Egypt and, and King Solomon just you know sleeping around a lot, you guys. That's why God punished him to hell for it. That's why we need one Adam to one Eve, one man for one woman, as God created the holy matrimonial ma marriage. In heaven, the kingdom of heaven, that they were married, and he chose them to be two, two bodies, but one flesh together forever in heaven. Now they fell, Adam and Eve. When we fell, our mother and father, our first moms, mom and dad out there, moms and dads, we fell, and we have that sin, that knowledge of goodness and evilness now. Evilness, the evilness of sin now. Sin is plaguing us. We are sinful and fallen now in this state, but we don't have to keep sinning and going to hell for it, like King Solomon. We don't we don't have to keep punishing ourselves and, and going to hell for it. We can cleanse ourselves, we can get back up in life, go through do these sins, but then go back to the church in full greater glory and not do those evil sins and those evil acts ever again with you know, having sex with all these women and these wives, these concubines, no more. No more lusting after them. And we need to instead be transcending ourselves to God the Father, Jesus Christ in heaven, and loving him above all these wives, these women, and these husbands. Above every man, woman, child on earth. Every, above everything. God needs to be our number one in life, Jesus Christ. And then everything else needs to be. Number two. Now we can't have like a like Solomon was doing, a woman above God, or like a goddess above God, like a lowercase G O D, or these lowercase G O D S Malcolm lowercase G O D S that he was making Malcolm's gods or Malcolm gods or or the goddess of you know no 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 there's no goddess goddesses or God no no God the Father is above. Every one of these so-called fake, lowercase g-o-d-s, gods and goddesses. No, no. He, he spits, he, they're just trash. They're just man-made. They're not made by God. They're just of sin. Made by sin, by human flesh. They're just naming conventions. That they, they just saying this. No, no. But God the Father created us, human beings, man and woman, Adam and Eve, to be one with him in our holy matrimonial marriage with him and to raise children only with our one wife all the days of our life and to love them but we can't love them above God the Father, above Jesus Christ. And these fake made up goddesses and God like the God of Zeus. No, no, no. Lowercase G-O-D, God of Zeus. No, no, no. No, no, no. None of these Greek gods, these Egyptian gods, these Pharaoh gods. No, no. Those are fake lowercase g-o-d-s gods. Capital G, the capital G, capital O, capital D, the God of the God of the God of 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 God is God. The Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the I am before Abraham was born. He saw creation. He is God. 
revealed in the flesh. Man revealed in the flesh. He is God. He is our Savior, our Redeemer, our Creator, our Lord Jesus Christ is. He is one with our Father, God the Father in heaven, the Son, Jesus Christ. They are, and the Holy Spirit within them, they three are all one same being. The creation, the creator, they are responsible for creation. They are our one and only zealous and jealous Christian God above all the other fake lowercase G-O-T-S and goddesses and gods and, and these fake stuffs, you guys. We can't have these fake things, these, you know, totem poles and the pharaoh and these 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 satanic things. And we, we can't have any of these like Solomon was doing, making them above God. Nothing above the capital G-O-D. None of these goddesses can be above God the Father. God the Father needs to be the one who is above everything in our hearts and lives. And then that way we can see him in heaven and love him and appreciate going to heaven with him instead of making these, you know, pharaohs and these Egyptian wives and gods and mobile and princesses are God, our lowercase Judeus, gods and goddesses and and, and Zeus, the fake god, and, and Malcolm and, and all these trash. Because we will be trash like them and perish in this world, this filth, this these desires, these lusts in life that we have, they will be our lusts burning in our hearts to hell. But if we choose to burn our hearts for Jesus Christ, for God the Father, for the Holy Spirit within, they will transcend our soul with them to heaven. All right. Let's close with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and God, we love you. Please guide our souls to heaven, as many of them as you can on earth. God, to the moment of our death, help to have us join with you, God the Father, our love above all things on this earth and in life. In your name we pray, to Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Peace. See you guys tomorrow. God bless.